Okay. Pinehurst, number two, U.S. Open 2024, U.S. Open preview right here. I forget what episode this is, but we didn't do an episode last week uh, because I'm going to Spain on Thursday to see my brother, Justin, and one of our great friends, Ethan. Listen's both friends of the program. Got Ethan on at some point, which he will. Maybe we'll do something in Spain. But instead of doing a episode on Monday, I thought because of the short time I have to do my research on Pinehurst, that I would use that time that I would be doing to record, cut, edit, you know, some clips, to use that to research for Pinehurst. So I'm doing this on Wednesday, June 5th, um, in the late afternoon. And I really think that ideally I wouldn't be doing this this early. I kind of like to see the tournament before on how players play, but it's kind of how the the cookie crumbles, so doing this pretty early, so kind of how this podcast will go is that I'm going to go through Pioneer's number two, host of the US Open, kind of some key characteristics of like the core, some history, some stats, last time we've seen Pinehurst, kind of go through how I think the course will play next week, and then I'll get into some players that I like, my prediction on who's going to win, some other guys, some sleepers, so that will be this podcast, I also will be doing my love-hate on Monday morning, so I'm going to get that out, even though I'm on vacation. Tuesday will be my sleeper segment. Uh, I'll get some course notes, too, I believe. And then Wednesday will be my card. And then I think at some point next week, I'm going to do a giveaway, because as you guys saw in the other episode, I got these balls from both my roommates with the Scheffler logo that I tweeted out and then the PD4 retweeted me. So I have a dozen of these balls, but I think because Sky is a favorite, it's probably going to land Pinehurst, is that I'm going to do a giveaway for one of those balls. So be on the lookout for that. You'll probably have to follow me on Twitter if you aren't following me. Follow this page, Bunker to Bunker, retweet it. And if you do all those three, you'll you know, be entered to chance to win um, three of the Scotty Balls, and I also have some of the Ball Marchers here there. So I'll put a couple in there for you guys, too. So let's let's just dive in. Let's, let's just get into it. I'm excited for this. I won't be able to watch much in round one and round two, but I'll be home for round three and four from Spain. So hopefully we got a tight uh, tournament, and hopefully the guys that I'm on make it that far. So course notes and history of Pioneer's number two, par 70. It's going to play around 7,600 yards. Green are Bermuda grass. The Donald Ross design restored by Bill Core and Ben Crenshaw. Kind of there's two par fives. Uh, a par 70, hole four and 10, which are 529 yards and 617 yards. Uh, the average length of the par fours are 462 yards. The shortest being 385 yards, which is the 13th hole, which in 2014, last time we saw Pinehurst, for a major, a major championship, they actually bumped up the tee to, I think, around two, uh, 309 yards in round four, so it could play drivable. And then the longest uh, par four is around, like, 500 yards. The course is a lot of long par threes. The shortest is 191 yards, which is hole six, and the longest is 242. Hole six, hole nine was one, uh, 191 yards. You can see par 70, so you really have to – there's not really many scoring – options on par fives since there's only two par fives and they're pretty long the par threes are very challenging being long par threes so uh, what i th- i think this course i think pioneer's number two will play is it's gonna be firm and fast that's how donald ross does it the greens are gonna be very undulating so having long irons in it's, it's gonna be hard to hold these greens there's not a lot of rough around these greens there's a little bit of like bunkers, sand dunes, fescue, but majority is just fairway runoff. That can be pretty tricky uh, for players. Because of how firm the course will play, it's going to be pretty hard. 2014, as I said, was the last time Pioneers hosted a major championship, and that's where Martin Keimer kind of just ran away with it. He basically won the tournament after 36 holes, basically. He won at 9 under par, 8 shots from... Ricky Fowler and, and Eric Compton, who were both tied for a second at one one under. Some other names in, in the top ten, just to get a sense of what you know kind of players. Well, at Pinehurst, 
in 2014 were Keegan Bradley, Jason Day, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, Henrik Stenson, Adam Scott, Brent Seneker, and Jimmy Walker. George Keith also played decently well. I think that was one of his, I mean, that was in 2014, so that was, you know, kind of before he broke out onto the, the scene. As I said, it's going to play, you know, greens will be very firm, not much rough on the course. Basically, starting from, you know, T to green, off the, the T, um, it's pretty long, but you have to be accurate off the T. I was watching the 2014 in the final round, and you do not want to get stuck in these sand dunes of hot, fescue things. It's a pretty, a decent amount of trees on the course, and there's a bunch of pine needles. So, it's going to look a lot different. It's, I guess, more of like a link style, maybe, per se, than Valhalla, which is just rough everywhere. And thick rough, you can just bomb it everywhere and kind of figure it out from there. But I don't think this is going to be a bombing gouge. I think players will not take driver as much as other tournaments just because because if the fairways are like so firm, they can, you know, club down for two, and if the fairways are up playing firm, so going to get that rollout because of like, the firmness. So I think creativity around these greens will be pretty crucial. Uh, I mean, I, as you saw from, like, the names who have pretty good, like, sh- you know, short games, you know, Jason Day, Snedeker, Ricky Fowler are three in, like, the top ten who have world-class, like, short games. I think creativity around the greens, as I said, will be something that I think will be pretty prevalent and something that I'm looking forward, looking at with the golfers that I am betting. Yes, since this is going to be a really hard course, I think it's going to be a true test of golf. I mean, it, Valhalla, I thought, you know, it produced a great theatrics for the fans, TV, rating. It had a great static leaderboard. However, I didn't think it was a true test. You didn't see many blow-up holes. You didn't see a lot of, like, triple bogeys or double bogeys. Like, you really, it's kind of easy to get up and down from anywhere, you know, the rough wasn't as thick that people in our community thought. The greens weren't that like difficult. It kind of became like a putting contest, honestly, uh, with Xander being at 21 under, Bryson at 20, you know, Hovland and Morikawa up there too. So it's going to play completely different, different style of golf. So kind of just to like recap what I just said over the last couple of minutes. For the player that I want, is I want someone who is accurate off the tee. I would kind of lean total driving over driving accuracy when you look at stats. Approach shots are going to be pretty far, so how do players hit, hit their long irons well? And I think short game would be, be very important. If, if it's hard to hold these greens, you're going to have to get up and down from a lot of different places, so creativity around the greens is key. And I think because the greens are so firm, that eye putting will be very important too. So those are kind of like the key traits of Pioneer number two. Kind of what I, how I think the course will play. Kind of what I am looking into some golfers. So kind of want to transition to some comp courses that I think, when I was doing my research, I'm like, all right, what are other comparable courses to Pinehurst that I can look and kind of see what players really – Played well, kind of fit at. The first one, I thought it was pretty simple. Augusta National with, there's not much rough on Augusta 2. It plays very firm. A lot of undulating greens, hard to hit greens and hold, you know, from your long irons. So, Augusta is another course. That compares to Pinehurst, I would say that 2019, the U.S. Open was at Shinnecock, Kepka won the tournament at one over. I think I was looking at that course too, and just around the green, there wasn't there there was some rough, but there was a lot of more fairway runoff that you had to get up and down from. From 2019, at Shinnecock, Kepka won as I said at one over. Other players in the top ten, Fleetwood was still second after shooting a 63 in the final round. Dustin Johnson, Patrick Reed, Fienau, Berger, Hatton, Xander, Stenson. 
already three names, Stenson, DJ, Kepka, both in the top 10 at 2019 at Shinnecock, and also in 2014 at the at Pinehurst. And I looked at the strokes gain stats from 2019, and I saw that everyone in the top 10 gained at least five and a half strokes with their stroke game. So, again, emphasizing the stroke game and putting in that tournament. I also thought that uh, I forget who's on Andy Lack's podcast, but he brought up that Concessional is a or Concession Golf Club in Brampton, Florida, which we saw last at the 2021 World Golf Championship, is a very interesting comp course too. And I look at pictures and some of the videos, and I do agree that it does it could play very similar. Pioneer's is a lot harder, but kind of just like the way that the course sets up, it's very interesting. Colin Morikawa, he won the tournament. Billy Horsell, Hovland, Kepka again. We're a tie for second. Scheffler, fifth. Rory, Louis, Webb, T6. Kokrak, Reed, T9. And then you got like Cam Smith, T11. Uh, Thomas was T15. So Fitzpatrick was T11 too. And Decky, T15. So kind of irons short game. Kind of brings it up too. The final concourse I'll bring up is uh, Tamers Bay in 2015. You know, we saw that they built that course just for the U.S. Open. We all know that Jordan Spieth won there. Justin Johnson was up there. Ustason was T2 with, with DJ. M. Scott, Cam Smith, T4. Snedeker again, 8th. Jason Day, Lowry, Rory, T9. And you have your, like, Rees and Kisners and, and Kutrus were in the top 15. Again, good around the green play. So you kind of get a sense of, like, what I'm trying to get out here. Uh, and I thought these were kind of some good comp, comp courses and comp leaderboards to kind of see where people are at and what kind of games people are at. Obviously, you know, some players are comp- completely different players than they were back in 2014, 2015, and then in 2021. So just want to give a sense of some of the things I um, I saw when I was doing my research. Okay. Let's dive into kind of some stats. So I kind of just want to bring up some stats that I got from Rick, rickrungood.com. I said before, driving accuracy would be pretty important, but I think just in general, total driving is, is a stat that we have on Rick Run Good that kind of gives an overall, like, how, like how are you in all facets of, of driving? So here's total driving over the last 50 rounds. This is only the PJ Tour players because Liv doesn't have total driving stats. So number one is Rory, two, Ludwig, three, Xander, four, Scheffler, five, Cam Young, six, Jordan Spieth, seven, Fitzpatrick, eight, Kitayama, nine, Keegan Bradley, and ten, Benny on. So, uh, you know, I said that Scheffler, Spieth, Fitzpatrick, Keegan were guys that were on those leaderboards of the concourse I went over. So, uh, no surprise that a lot of these guys are the elites of the elite. You know, Spieth is definitely playing a lot better with with his driver recently, which is pretty crazy to even say, because you know back then, kind of in his prime, you know he was really known for his irons, his short game, and also he just made every putt back in 2015, 2016, 2017. Because I kind of emphasized off the tee irons around the green, I wanted to look and kind of update everyone on the 2024 tee the green stats. So number one uh, golf in 2024, Scheffler, Neiman, Ander. Rory, Bryson, Team, Burmeister, Fromm, JT, Hideki, Siwoo. So those round out the top 10 in Tita Green. Stats, you know, you know, you know, Scheffler has won a bunch this year. Xander just won the PGA. Rory has won twice this year. Bryson, you know, two top 10s. Maybe even better in both of like, the majors. Team Burmeister is playing great golf right now. He just qualified. Um, in one of the Monday qualifiers, I forget where, what state, but he definitely uh, qualified. And then Crom's in there, JT, he's hitting the ball great. He, it's just really his putter that is, he's just lost with, and I saw that he was testing out some putters. I think he was testing out a blade, Guy Cameron Blade at Memorial. Decky has been playing great golf. And then Maybe came back to earth the last couple of tournaments. I think he's lost strokes on approach in his last two. So he's someone I'm going to keep an eye on at Memorial. And then Siwoo Count is hitting the ball great. Again, he just can't putt. Has zero confidence in his putter. And then kind of the round out, this, this is in no particular order. But here are some of the best 
long iron player is that you're going to hit a lot of shots from 175 yards, 200, 200 plus yards. And that is Ludwig, Rahm, Hovland, Scheffler, Kitayama, Hoagie, Morikawa, Cam Young, Hideki, Bryson, Keegan. Those are just some of the names when I was doing my research that just came up. So um, you can kind of see some of the crossover, but those are kind of the best long iron players, uh, in my opinion, from just looking at the stats. What else do I want to say? So we went over like pretty quickly. I kind of want to make this more of a quick of a quicker podcast, but yeah. So kind of went through the course notes and history, how I think the course will play. It's going to be pretty hard, I still think. Not sure what. I think this is a hard tournament. People have been asking me kind of like how, like, it's like truly how hard do you think the course will play? I really don't know. We'll get more of that on like the grounds. I remember at, at, um, Valhalla, it was Adam Kirk and Matt Gannon were there and Andy Lack, who, you know, was communicating with him, who I got to talk to the last couple of times because I joined the RPS Discord, but they were kind of saying how Pinehurst is going to, or, Valhalla is playing a lot easier than people thought. That it's kind of like a joke how easy and kind of saw that. So I don't know what the winning score will be. I don't know what the, I don't think there's odds out on that yet, but it'll be interesting to see what people say on the grounds who I talk to. Kind of get a sense of where people are at. So let's get into just the betting board, I guess. I mean, let's just start with Sky Shuffler. I mean, the guy. He finally has everything off his chest. Uh, charges were dropped, doesn't have to worry about that. He had his kid about a month ago, so kind of of getting used to being a dad. So I think now, kind of in the last month, Sheffler can finally just focus on golf and winning his third major championship. And I really think he is going to win. He's plus 410 on Fandle to win this open. He just fits his course so well. He's the best key green player, best long run player, best short game. And because of course is gonna play hard, it's very like Augusta, there's you know, the hard the course is and it fits as good as any course, I think, on tour this year. Scheffler can separate himself way easier than a Valhalla where, you know, a lot of people have a chance. Because he's so smart and I really think this is going to be a mental test for these players and for all those reasons, I just think Scheffler is going to win. I'm not sure if I can bet the plus 400 on him to win. I basically would have just to take Scheffler and just ride Scheffler out. For fun, I took, like, other, other you know, par- I, 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 like, parlayed the maps to win the title and Scheffler to win. I forget what the odds were. But that was just something fun I used on, like, on a free bet. But I just don't, from what I just said, I just don't see how he doesn't win. He could... He could win by, like, three, four strokes. I don't think it'll be, like, a Martin Keimer. Winning by eight strokes, that's just insane. I hope it 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 doesn't end like that because who wants someone to win by, like, eight strokes? But if the course is going to play really hard and really, really firm, it's just so much easier for Scheffler just to break it apart from, like, the pack. So that's my Scheffler take. I think he's going to win. But I'll speak on, you know, Someone outside Sky, Sky Shepherd who I think is really going to contend. Um, and then kind of like the rest of the board, Rory is 11-1. I just don't – I just can't get there anymore. I don't really bet Rory at majors. Last time I bet him at a major was 22 Open Championship, which was when he lost to Cam Smith, which Rory, you know, should have really – Rory's kind of make us – I don't think he made a single putt at all. During like round four, so Xander's thirteen to one. Is is he really gonna win back to back with majors? Probably not. But this course suits him well because you really have to be great in all facets of your game, and maybe not off with the tee. But Xander's he's long and straight, great short game, great putter. People don't talk about his his short game and putting enough. But like the question is, is he really gonna win back to back? I just, I just can't get there. 17-1, to 1, we have Bryson and Hovland. I think with both of these guys, especially for Hovland, you know, he played, you know, he played really well. That course, I said it in my preview in January, like, that course is perfect for Hovland. You know, you have to be long, Valhalla was. Thick rough, chips really well. 
with greens that have thick rough, it's just easier to get up and down for these guys. So I don't know if I trust him as much on this type of course where there's no rough around the greens. He's a great driver. He's a long and straight, great long iron player. But if you're hitting less greens in regulation, you have to get up and down. Like I, I don't know if I can get there with Hovland, especially at 17-1. to But he could just win this week back-to-back time at the Memorial. And maybe he'll win again. You know, Maybe he'll get his first championship. Bryson is kind of the, the same. Like, the course just fit him so well at Valhalla. He was, it was Hovland and Bryson were the two guys preseason for them to win. They both were in the top five. And with Bryson... Like, if you're trying to compare Gusta to Pinehurst, like, Bryson hasn't played Augusta that well in his career. His best finish was this year. Yes, I think Bryson's playing the best golf of his career, and he's a grinder and will make adjustments. But if this course isn't a bomb and gouge course, and the way that Bryson separates himself is with his driver, and if that's kind of not that pivotal this week, then um, it, it's harder for Bryson's path. But he's playing pretty well. He tripped really well at so based on course fit, I like Bryson's profile and Hallman's profile at different courses, but also it, these guys are so talented that it wouldn't shock me if they play well this week. So the next guys are the guys I, I circled and have made bets on, or one I, I made a bet on, the other I haven't. But Colin Morikawa was my pick in January when, when I did my US Open preview podcast, and I really think he's going to have a great week. One, he's one of the best long iron players, really just iron players in general in the world. He's very accurate off the tee. Something that has really surprised me this year with Colin is his around the green play was once a weakness, and now it's, it's like a strength. Uh, he's gained positive strokes around the green in seven straight starts. He fixed his putter at Augusta. He made a equipment change and has been putting really well. I like to play... Morikawa in major championships because he just brings it just brings the best out of him on hard courses and I just think he's due he's heading it, it great his game's coming together and I just love him this week so he's 21 to one right now debating on taking that before I go to Spain because if he wins Memorial he might be you know you know he might be in that like 13 to one range with with Xander to win so. Colin is someone I penciled in a while ago that uh, I think he's going to play great. Next guy on the board on Fandle, is, he is 24-1, to one, and that's Brooks Kepka. He's like 16-1, to 18-1 on, on, on other books. I took this 24-1 to one number on Kepka. He won the 2017-2018 to 2018 US Open. Was on him at the PJ Championship for obvious like, reasons. He played well. I thought his ball striking was good, not great. But his putter really let him down. He missed a ton of short putts. So it'll be interesting to see him at Live Houston on how he putts and if he has kind of made improvements in that area. But really overall, I like Kepka at Pioneers because it's, if it's truly going to be a mental test, he knows how to manage these courses. He doesn't play aggressive. He plays very boring golf, hits it to like 25, 30 feet, two putt, and get out. So the way that this course is going to play really hard, you're going to have to take your, your chances to be conservative on some holes, aggressive on other holes. I think this sets up well for Kepka, and I'm just playing this number of 24 to 1. I think that is crazy for a guy who has won here, has won a US Open twice, and he was top 10 at Pinehurst in 2014. And also, I forget where he said this. He said this in the last year or two years, but I think a reporter asked him at one of the majors or some tournament that they asked Kepka, like when did he like when did it finally click for him on how to play major championships? He said twenty fourteen at Pinehurst. That's kind of my thing. Next on the board is John Rahm. He's also twenty four to one. I'm just out on John Rahm. I don't know what's up. I said this in my stock up, stock down uh, podcast two weeks ago that. He just looks frustrated out there. He doesn't look like himself. He doesn't look happy. His body language is off, and I am concerned. He hasn't played well in, like, the first two majors. I really don't care about what he's done on live. He's a top 10 
machine, but you're only playing three rounds with like 40 guys and how many of those have to actually contend in live tournaments. So just at like that, you know, if you want to play like the number and be like, you're now gonna, like 24 to one on John Rom and just get his, his name value. Like, I'm not going to blame you for that. He has showed me nothing this year to believe that I should be on John Rom at the U S open. I'm going to skip over some guys and highlight the next guy just in this range. I think this course sets up really well for Cameron Smith. He's the best putter in the world, and he's arguably the best around the green player, too. He can get up and down from anywhere. He has the creativity to play well on these Pinehurst Don Ross greens. You know, he's played well at Augusta. He finished T4 at Chambers Bay, fourth at LACC, another comp course, I think, and played well at Congression in 2021. What kind of concerns me is that he isn't the best driver, and he, if he can just keep it in play, maybe club down, his irons aren't where I would like them to be just based off stats, but if this course is going to play hard and you have to get up and down from par from anywhere... Cam Smith is, you know, 1A to Sky Shuffler in this working category, so I'm kind of hesitant. I haven't placed a bet on him yet, not sure if I will, but I think this course can really set up for him if the, you know, off the tee isn't as important, really, um, for him, because he he hits it anywhere. He's not very accurate, so I kind of want to see how what people are saying on the grounds before I go to Cam Smith, but because of his putting around the green plate and his historics of being a great approach player. I think he's someone to keep an eye on. He is 36 to one on Fandle. Some other guy in this range, Tommy Fleetwood. He's someone that, um, he, you know, he was still a second at Shinnecock. He has a game too that doesn't really have a weakness, but doesn't really have like a major strength. He is pretty creative. I think this also fits well for him too. He played well at Augusta this year. Yeah, but, you know, Tommy has never, you know, he's never won on the PJ Tour. He hasn't won a major. So, he's someone that I think he fits the build for this course. And I think he's someone that, you know, could be interesting in other formats in some office pools. Don't really have much opinions on Cantlay, Hideki Fitzpatrick, J- JT Homa. All those guys have really good, like, short games. As I said, so that's kind of a list of guys I'm kind of waiting to see at Mario, at Memorial and how they play. The next guy I want to talk about is Sam Burns. So he's hitting his irons very well. He gained four strokes from approach at the Canadian Open. He's also been driving it really well off the tee. He's one of the best Bermuda, Bermuda grass putters in the field, and he's third in strokes gained on firm and fast greens. Just my concern with Sam Burns is that he doesn't play well in majors. His best major finish was 20th at the 2022 PJ Championship. So I think he can fit this course too, with kind of the reasons I said. He's 55-1, to 1, you know, and kind of also want to see how he plays this week. But if, you know, putting's going to be pretty important, you know, he's one of the best, as I said, Bermuda Grass putters. So yeah, he's 55-1. to 1. I do, I will, let's just, let's just get this out of the way. Let's get the, the Jordan Spieth discussion out of the way. Spieth, he fits this course around the green play, as I said. He's hitting his driver really well. The best he's been hit, he's hitting his driver since 2015, 2016, 2017. Plays well at comp courses, you know, Augusta, Cameron's Bay, pretty good. He just has this wrist injury that he has not hitting his approach shots well, which is very concerning. And of course that you're going to have to hit your irons well. You know, there are talks that he was going to skip the Memorial to get some more rest before Pinehurst. He is playing this week. We'll see how, we'll see how he plays. I'm not sure if I'm concerned about that or not, but it's, He's 55 to 1, which is crazy. He's nice. So, again, he's also someone I'm going to wait and, and see. I might bet him for fun because it's Jordan Spieth and 
betting is supposed to be fun, bet responsibly. That's where I'm at with Jordan Spieth. There is one guy I want to talk about who I don't even see on the odds board. Oh, there he is. I think this guy is the one. If you had to ask, ask me, who's one guy you're looking at the Memorial this week to see how he plays to prepare for punters? And the first guy that comes to mind is Will Zalatoris. Zalatoris is a great long iron player. Very good driver of the golf ball. He's also someone that he elevates his game at major championships. He loves playing harder courses. And with what I just said, I think he's a good fit for this course. However, there are some concerns. Number one, he's not hit, he's not driving it like he used to. His ball speed's down. His distance is down. That could be he's still trying to work through his swing because of his back issues. Concern with his putter. He traditionally has played well with his putter on fast greens like Augusta. He is a good black putter, but Memorial has firm in fast greens too, so I also want to see how he putts this week. But I took this Zalatoris number at 55 to 1. DraftKings has 25 to 1 on Zalatoris right now, so that's why you have multiple like, books. So the bets I already have. I have Kepka and I have Dal Torres. I'm going to bet Morikawa too. I might add another one. But I'm still deciding on, on Scotty at the moment. Before we kind of wrap up here, I want to go through some, two of the sleepers that I want to give out before we hop off. Number one is Dean. Big Dean Burmeester. Was on at the PJ Championship. He finished T12. He gained five strokes on approach at the PGA. Great driver. And I think, you know, he just he just played well to qualify for this tournament. He is in form top 10 in strokes game to, to green in 2024. And I just think he's had to keep riding the hot hand. So I'll be playing some big team Burmeester in DFS or top 40 matchups, office pools, you name it. Another one of my favorite sleepers is Brian Harmon. Again, he fits the mold of great around the green player, good middle to long iron approach player, also a great putter. He isn't the strongest off the tee. He hasn't really hit it far, but he hits it pretty straight. So it's a course that he's going to play very firm. I think he can still gain some distance with the fairies being firm. So I think with Harmon, if he won with the Open Championship, Last year, he played well at the players, so he also has been playing well at these hard courses. If you ask me, is Brian Harmon going to win two majors in the last year? I'm going to say probably not, but I think I think he's nine to one. He's someone I think could play well, kind of at the top thirty, top forty market. <coughs> so that wraps up kind of a quick pod. I would love to go through all these guys, but just on time and everything um gonna wrap it up i kind of want to see if i missed anyone here i didn't i did miss someone another guy on my radar max homa he's played well in the last three majors t3 at the masters he's kind of like i think he's like a tier below xander where they, yeah he has a complete game but i saw a report i think d-rap posted this that you know him and mark blackburn his coach are really going through some things on the range at the Memorial. He played with his driver. His off-the-tee numbers haven't been great. His irons are hit or miss. Played really bad at Colonial, but he could be someone very sneaky if he shows any sign of life. Max is kind of running into that form. I think he's really learning how to play these major championships. Max is someone I'm keeping an eye on, too. Uh, those are my guys. I went through. I'm really excited for this week. Kind of bad timing with this trip I'm taking. But I kind of wanted to get the podcast out. We'll be posting clips on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube shorts from this page. So I need some time to edit those before I leave Thursday night. Yeah, it's going to be a great week. Hit me up on, you know, text or Twitter or anything about any questions. I'm going to try to give as much analysis as I can. But... I'm guaranteeing that I will be putting out 
my love hate on Monday, Tuesday, sleepers, Wednesday card, any other questions and bets, but I'm excited. It's going to be a fun week. It's going to be a completely different vibe than P- the PGA. Uh, I hope Sheffler doesn't run away with it. But make sure to like and subscribe to this podcast. Make sure to follow me at Josh, Josh underscore Siegel 8. All at Bunk to Bunk Pod on Twitter. Bunker to Bunker on TikTok, Instagram. Everything. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. And make sure you get into the giveaway that I'm giving out. I'm gonna, I want to say either I'll do it Monday or Tuesday, and you got to make sure you get that in before Thursday, round one. I think I'll do that. Maybe I'll have it open for two days. But, everyone, I love the support. Let's keep it up. Let's have a great U.S. Open. Talk to you guys soon.